Demir FPV, thank you for 55 Turkish Lira. I am building an 8S HDLRC Reckon 10 with Zing 3110 motors, 900 kV, T Motor F55 Pro 3, good. Maytek Beck 12S Pro between the ESC, is it okay? Um, so I, I'm going to tell you, if you've already spent your money and you're locked into this hardware, more power to you. Nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I would recommend anybody doing an 8S build, check out the Foxier Reaper ESC and flight controller combo. The reason I say that is they're rated for, the flight controller is rated for 8S and you do not need a separate voltage regulator like you're going to need uh, if you go with the T-Motor ESC and a T-Motor flight controller. Okay. So if you haven't bought that hardware yet, or if you're willing to put that T-Motor ESC and, and flight controller in a different build, you, you could, by the way, you could buy the Foxier flight controller and redo the pinout to make it work with the T-Motor ESC. It'll just be a little bit of a hassle. Um, but yeah, a, a, a 12S Beck between the ESC and the 6S flight controller, it's okay. That is a way you could do it. Uh, Christopher Conkright, thank you for a $5 super chat. Let me just check and see if Christopher left a message in another, left a question in another message. He, do, he did. Oh, here's another super chat. Thanks for another $5 super chat, Christopher. I have a receiver that does a quick green flash when plugged in, and that's it. I checked the wiring. Nothing is touching. Um... If, if that happened to me, I, I'm going to assume, Christopher, that it's an Express LRS receiver because I think we talked about this in email, but I'm not 100% sure. What I would do is I would disconnect the TX and RX wires from the receiver because sometimes the, the, the receiver can get like kicked into bootloader mode or something weird by the TX and RX wires. It's also possible that you just have a bad receiver. It might be possible to flash the receiver using a using bootloader mode. Um, did Radio Master just release a program? Somebody, dang it, I'm blanking. Blunty, somebody just released a programming adapter. It wasn't the Beta FPV one. So Beta FPV has one. Somebody else just released one. I'm blanking. Do you have any idea, Blunty? Probably not. I do not. Sorry. So you could use this. This is the beta FPV recovery dongle. This, if you have a CP210 or an FTDI adapter already, you can use it to flash an Express LRS receiver, but it's a little bit of a hassle to hook up the wires. The advantage of this is that it comes with these, uh, I think they're called pogo pins, and it's really easy to just uh, flash the adapter, flash the receiver just by touching the pins. Um, Chat. Chat says it is Radio Master. You were Radio correct. Master did. Why can't I find it, though? Help me, chat. Help me, chat. Captain Bry. Captain Bry, Express LRS Dev. Captain Bry, you're a moderator. You could post a link, too. The reason I was excited about this is that I always kind of hold my nose when I buy beta FPV hardware because beta FPV hardware sometimes is very poor quality. This programming adapter, I haven't heard anything bad about it. I'll probably buy one right now. But um, if Radio Master made one, I would buy the Radio Master one first just because I like them better as a brand. Um, okay, so we could go with the Beta FPV one. And if you've got an Express LRS receiver that is bricked, this is a way. If it's possible to restore it, this will do it. It may not be possible because it may just be damaged. Um, is that one I just posted in chat? Is that right? Oh, now that I think it is. Thank you, Blunty. Oh man, it's it's good to be good to be back as a team, Blunty. But the question is, does it come with pogo pins? Because that's the big advantage of the of the Beta FPV one. Multiple protection servants, fine. Easily upgrade firmware. Does it come with this? This here, does it come with this? Or do I have to buy this? You're showing me a picture. Yeah, do, 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 did you provide it? Package includes Rauk FPV. Thank you, Rauk FPV in the Discord. Oh, amazing. Oh, wow. 
Oh, oh, Radio Master. I'm, I'm doing the Vince McMahon meme. Oh, oh, wow. We got the, we got test hooks. Oh, Radio Master. See, I knew I liked Radio Master better than Beta FPV. And it's the same price. Boom. Buy with PayPal. Okay, now I have to get the, I have to get this off screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to buy that today. Okay. Awesome. No reason to buy the beta FPV one. Same price, more stuff. Okay. Best analog goggles for under $200. Can you still get the Cobra X? I think the Cobra X is $250, $270. Uh, what about the Cobra S? How much is the Cobra S? One sixty nine. Probably the Sky Zone Cobra S, if you can find it. And then the other one is the the EV eight hundred DM, which is like not a great goggle, but it's only eighty five dollars, and it will get you in the air. Um. Is there a way to flash a LBT radio to FCC? Yes. Uh, assuming you're talking about FreeSky, you can flash different firmware to the radio and the receiver, and it will change the region. You just need to download the, the FCC firmware. The, yeah, go ahead, Blunty. Same for ExpressLRS. Uh, they sell radios as a LBT and FCC, but you can also just flash the internal module to whichever. Yep. Uh, in Access... In, in FreeSky Access, I think it's just a software setting. I don't even think it's different firmware. Here's a question. I can't decide between a 5-inch Evoke and a 6-inch Evoke for light freestyle and cinematic stuff. I would probably do the 6-inch. since you, If you said, like, hardcore freestyle, it would be the 5-inch. Uh, if, th if your description is light freestyle and cinematic stuff, I think I would get the 6-inch. You have to be aware that your prop selection in 6-inch is going to be much smaller. There's just not a lot of 6-inch props out there to pick from. So you're, you're going to give that up. But um, cinematic stuff generally is fl sl slower, smoother, and more flowy. And 6-inch is going to give you a little bit more stability and a little bit uh, longer flight time. That being said, uh, you know, five inches also going to be fine. You're going to have a lot better prop selection if you want to play with different props. And five inches is going to have less issues with vibration. The larger the prop, the more you have to deal with vibration. And so you may actually get better cinematic results with a five inch than with a six inch. If you're, if you're not sure, probably get the five inch. It's the safer bet. Uh, 